Hello dear learners, I am Amazinna, I am a chemistry teacher. My mission is to make chemistry simpler for the students. Today I am with formula writing. I usually get some of the students having trouble in writing formula. My today's goal is making the writing formula very easy and simple. After you watch the video, have the practices and you will certainly feel better in writing formula. You know, a chemical formula is a shorthand which basically represents a particular chemical substance. Suppose here sodium chloride. The name is sodium chloride. S-O-D-I-U-M-C-H-L-O-R-I-D. It's a big name with two words. You can simply write this as NaCl. So this is a short form. In chemistry we usually use short form to represent different chemical substances and writing equations easily. For writing formula you need to know two type of things. One is symbol of the atoms or ions and another is valences. Today I am going to make them simple for you. We are starting with an example aluminum oxide here. We write aluminum oxide with the symbol of aluminum and oxygen. Al is the symbol of aluminum and O is the symbol of oxygen. After we write the symbols, we need to write the valences. We write the valency of oxygen near to aluminum and we write the valency of aluminum near to oxygen, which means the valences are exchanged. And this is aluminum oxide. And what is a valency? Valency basically means a combining number. Here give an example, sodium combines with one chlorine atom to make sodium chloride. So the combining number or valency of sodium is 1. The magnesium combines with two chlorine atoms to make magnesium chloride. So the combining number or valency of magnesium is 2. And aluminum combines with three chlorine atoms. So its combining number or valency is 3. Silicon here silicon combines with four chlorine atoms so its valency is four and we need to define valency and basically we define this in terms of electrons so valency is the number of electrons that an atom loses gains or shares in a covalent bond if you have the access to the periodic table you can easily get the valences of the elements from periodic table and valency of group one element sodium here sodium is an example with electron configuration 281 and one electron in the outermost shell so sodium loses one electron as sodium loses one electron so its valency is one and look at the periodic table not only sodium all group one elements lose one electron so the valency will be one and see here group two elements magnesium with an example electron configuration is 282 so two electrons in the outermost shell so magnesium is going to lose two electrons as magnesium loses two electrons so its valency would be two not only magnesium all group two elements in the periodic table would lose two electrons with a valency two Now we get some non-metals, halogen here, group 7 elements, getting an example of chlorine. Chlorine has 7 electrons in the outer shell, so this gains 1 electron. And as chlorine gains 1 electron, so its valency is 1. And chlorine is also the element which sends 1 electron for sharing in a covalent bond. Not only chlorine, all group 7 elements will gain one electron or will send one electron for sharing. So all of them have valency of one like group 1 metals. And now we get another example of group 6 elements. Oxygen here, oxygen gaining two electrons because in the outer shell you get oxygen has six electrons. So as oxygen gains two electrons, so its valency is two. And oxygen is also the atom that sends two electrons for sharing if they make covalent bond. Not only oxygen, all group six elements gain or share two electrons. So their valency 
is to like group two elements and you get here all the elements all the main group elements together start with the valency one and you know group one elements and group seven elements will have valency same one because group one elements lose one electron and group seven elements gain one electron and now you get valency two all the elements of group two and all the elements of group six will have their valency two and that we get for a valency three group three elements and group five elements will have valency three and only one group in the periodic table which is group four with the valency of group four that we get here and for your exercise look at the table contains some symbol of the elements and what your job you find the symbols in the periodic table and identify the groups and accordingly you will write here the valency of the elements and this is how you can use your periodic table to identify valencies of any of the elements with their symbol and then variable valencies some elements which we call transition elements between group 2 and group 3 in the main block periodic table they have variable valencies you're lucky that you don't need to memorize them or remember them because they're always given with their names for instance copper two sulfate here you get two given because this is 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 oxidation number or valency so you write the copper sulfate as this and copper one sulfate is with valency one same you get for iron two oxide or you may get iron three oxides this is how their valencies are always given with their names now another thing valencies of polyatomic ions or radicals these are basically a group of atoms with charge and here this is the table this is the only thing you need to remember and here you get four columns in the first column you get some ions with valency one in the second column you get sulfates sulfides carbonates zinc valency two and another column third column with the valency three and you just need to remember these few valences and I still can help you to make them simpler here you get from column 1 you pick 3 ions which contains nitrogen I call them group of nitrogen they all have same valences which mean 1 this means that when you get a group or polyatomic ions containing nitrogen atoms then you will understand the valency of the ion will be 1 and then here you get another group group of phosphorus with valency 3 containing phosphorus so when you remember these two groups the first group containing nitrogen another group containing phosphorus and the valencies respectively 1 and 3 then remaining ions in the table are only few and I suggest first you first you try to remember the valencies of the first column here's a hydroxide nitrate nitrite ammonium and silver and then uh, third column with phosphate and phosphite and after that you will try to remember two because when one and three finish the remainings are certainly group two and get here another thing this valency decreases by one if a hydrogen atom is added to a negative ion its valency decreases by one because you know hydrogen is a positive you see here in the first column the first ion is carbonate with the charge 2 minus means the valency is 2 and if you add a hydrogen you get hydrogen carbonate and its charge decreases and now its valency is 1 same for sulfate sulfate with valency minus 2 and when a hydrogen atom added its hydrogen sulfate with valency 1 phosphate here with valency 3 and if this is hydrogen phosphate you get valency is 2 I also find some of the students having trouble with the names of some of the group ions or polyatomic ions. This is because the ions are quite similar, they are very close and the names are also close. Now I'm going to help you how you can distinguish them and remember them properly. And some confusing names for a few of the ions and they also follow our trend based on number of oxygen atoms in the ions see here first column again end with eight when you get the ions in the first column here are nitrate 
sulfate and phosphate all of them end with eight and in the second group in second column you get all of them end with eight the difference between these two columns is the ions in the second column you get with one less oxygen so when you will get a group ion with maximum number of oxygen atoms then that will end with eight nitrate sulfate phosphate and if you get one less oxygen then the maximum number maximum possible number of oxygen then they will be I nitrite phosphate sulfite etc and if you get the ion without oxygen then they will be ide nitride sulfide phosphide i give you some example here the first example is sodium nitrate with maximum number of oxygen with nitrate and then if you get one less oxygen this is sodium nitrite then you get sodium nitride with no oxygen get for sulfate sodium sulfate and again get sul sodium sulfite then sodium sulfide and in the last group you get sodium phosphate then sodium phosphite and sodium phosphide and then practice session practice session i'm giving you here 12 cations uh, in the first two columns and 12 anions in second two columns and with this 12 and 12 total 24 ions you can write 144 formula of compounds how is that start with the first one which is here calcium ion and with the calcium ion you can write 12 formula how calcium can be combined with all 12 anions separately you will get here 12 formula of 12 compounds after calcium you can use potassium to write 12 formula potassium is combined with all 12 anions separately you will get 12 formula this is how you use all the cations one to another and you can write different formula altogether you will have 144 compounds and with the formula when you practice writing so many formula then your problem will be solved and you will feel comfortable writing formula the most important thing is practice after you understand them and use a short method to remember them when you practice then basically these informations are embedded in your brain and you can easily use them when they are required i hope this has been very easy and helpful to you in writing and in solving so many hassle that you have been probably facing so long and i think um, you have enjoyed this video